Welcome to our segment on VST and DirectX. VST, or Virtual Studio Technology, was introduced by Steinberg in 1996. Now this event changed the entire musical world, and Steinberg definitely scored big in the war of sequencers. After all, it was the first cross-platform compatible and hardware-independent technology with the open source code freely available to all developers. In today's world, we have a variety of VST plugins and instruments available. These range from less than a megabyte in size and free of cost, all the way to 50 and more gigabytes in size with thousands of dollars on the price tag. Cubase is distributed with a few third-party VST plugins. You can also purchase some third-party plugins and instruments. DirectX is another widely available open source format developed by Microsoft, and virtually all main commercially available plugins today come in VST and DirectX versions. DXI or DirectX Instrument, on the other hand, is still far less common than VST instruments. Now let's see how VST and DirectX are implemented in Cubase. One way to apply an effect to a track is through the insert section in the inspector or the edit channel settings window. Select track. Unfold the insert section of the inspector. Left click here and from the menu select reverb A. On top of the effect window you can see on off bypass read write automation buttons and next to them is a preset drop-down menu. We can manipulate this effect in real time. Some effects are more demanding on your CPU than others. To check the CPU usage, select Devices, VST Performance, Another way to apply your effects is offline, to a selected range or multiple events. Select Audio, Plugins, Reverb. I've chosen Reverb A. To audition my results, I'm going to use the Preview button. If you don't hear anything, check the device the Devices Port column under Devices, VST Connections, Studio. Remember, auditioning goes through the Audition channel.
Press the Process button. This action doesn't affect the original file, but affects new files created in the Edits folder of the project. It only changes how the audio plays in this project. Later on, you can modify, deactivate, or replace the effect from the Offline Process History dialog window under Audio, Offline Process History. The reason you see two Offline Process History dialog windows is because both events we applied the effect to were still selected. I'll be covering more on offline processing later in this course. Now a few words on managing plugins. Most plugins in these days, like I mentioned before, come in VST and DirectX versions. You don't need to install both. In many cases, VST plugins can simply be dragged into the VST plugin folder. or into the shared VST plugin folder. The plugins will appear in your pop-up menus. But if your plugins do come with an installer, use it. Now at some point you're going to need to organize your plugins. So let's create a new folder inside the VST plugins directory. We're going to call it My Plugins folder, and I'll drag my plugins inside. You can rename them as well. My Plugin 1, My Plugin 2. The same procedure can be applied to the shared VST Plugins folder. Just keep in mind that plugins in this directory can be used by other programs. Now you'll need to restart Cubase. And here you can see our plugins. The DirectX plugins are a component of your operating system. Or to be precise, Microsoft DirectX. They're not really a part of Cubase. So you don't install your DirectX plugins to the VST plugins folder. Rather, you access the DirectX plugins under the DirectX submenu. Let's open our plugins information window under the devices menu. Here you can see all available VST, DirectX, and MIDI plugins in your system. If this box is checked, you will only show currently used VST plugins here. You can resize and move each column. You can also sort the items in the columns as well. The check mark here indicates the available plugins in the plugins drop down menu. This number here represents how many instances of the plugins are currently in use. A left click lets you see where in Cubase the plugin has been used. The number of inputs and outputs is shown here. Here you've got the number of parameters and programs. The plugin locations are shown in this column. The delay column shows the delay time in the samples when the plugin is used as an insert. Here you can add, change, or remove shared VST plugin folders. 
Next, we're going to talk about VST instruments. To load VST instruments, select Devices, VST Instruments, shortcut F11. Cubase SX has 64 VST instrument slots. Cubase SL has 32, and SE has only 16. Chances are, however, you won't use even all of these. For even a few VST instruments played back at the same time can quickly overload some computers' CPUs. VST instruments are basically computer programs that mimic the behaviors of real instruments. However, some VST instruments exist only in the virtual world, so these would be highly computerized sounds. Cubase SX comes with five VST instruments, and SL comes with three. I'm going to load Hypersonic from Steinberg. Right-click, select Always on Top. Now let's load some sound banks on the first three channels as well. Here you'll recognize the on-off, bypass, and read-write automation buttons. From the drop-down menus here, you can load the VST instruments or the sound bank. You can also store or delete presets. The VST instruments panel window has two extra buttons, freeze instrument and open instruments. Here you can open and close your VST Instruments window. The Freeze function allows you to free up CPU power. When the Freeze function is applied, Cubase renders a VST instrument to one audio file per each channel and stores these files in the Freeze folder of your project. Now during playback, Cubase uses these files as a sound source instead of calculating the sound of the VST instrument in real time. Pretty convenient. For example, let's route all of our three loaded instruments to the same channel. Click the Freeze button. The dialog window opens. Freeze Instrument Only does exactly what it says it does. It'll freeze only the instruments. Freeze Instrument and Channels will freeze the instruments and insert effects on the instrument channels. Unload Instrument when frozen. This is useful if you need to free up some RAM. When an instrument's been loaded, the corresponding channel or channel strips appear in the mixer panel. For example, the virtual bass unit and the LM7 drum machine have one stereo channel each. Hypersonic can have up to 16 separate channels with each loaded instrument routed through its own channel. In the project window, a folder has been added for each loaded instrument. Inside this folder, 
is the automation tracks. One track is for automating your instrument parameters, and one is for each channel. LM7 has two tracks, Embracer, has three, and the hypersonic here has five tracks. If you load a second instance of the same instrument, let's take LM7 for example, A second LM7 folder with LM7 tracks will appear. You can open the VST instrument window by clicking here or here. In the inspector of the VST instrument channel automation tracks, you can select the output bus. Adjust your volume and your pan settings. You can insert effects, plugins, etc. The VST instrument channel settings window can be opened by pressing this button. Select your MIDI track in the output menu. Select a VST instrument, and now the MIDI track is routed to Hypersonic in this case. Click the Open Device button. I've got three patches already loaded, but what if I want to try another sound? Select the channel here, and from this drop down menu, choose a different patch. If your VSTI, such as LM7, for example, supports only one channel, to change channels here will make no difference. For your specific VST instrument, Make sure you check its owner manual. Under Inserts in the inspector, you can apply MIDI plugins to your MIDI track. We'll be covering more on MIDI tracks and MIDI plugins later in this course. Now, if you experience any latency effect, as a result of playing VST instruments in real time during live recording with monitoring through Cubase, for example, what you want to do is go to File, Preferences, VST, and adjust the delay compensation threshold. To activate this function, switch on Constrain Delay Compensation. This is a button in your toolbar. We covered, as you might remember, the delay compensation topic in the project window segment of this course. And this concludes our segment on VST and DirectX.